Hey, what's going on everybody? So if you are watching this right now, you have no doubt stumbled across the very first episode of When the Hunt Calls. So I say thank you and welcome, all right? So uh, a couple of things. Um, what you're about to watch is the, as I said, the very first interview of When the Hunt Calls. The whole thing about When the Hunt Calls is me interviewing people, talking to people, chopping it up about hunting and stuff that I'd really like to know and essentially share with you guys. Um, now, When the Hunt Calls is a show that is very low key or low tech, if you will. I probably, first time you ever hear the iPhone referred to as low tech, but um, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's me, a guest, on my iPhone, on Instagram Live, um, in my apartment, all right? As you can see here, I'm actually recording this sitting out front <laughs> of my apartment building. Um, so, uh, this was the first time that I was trying this out, Instagram Live, without any comments. But unfortunately, I didn't disable the comments um, early enough. So as you watch the video uh, and our guest speaking, there are comments that roll up and stay there for the entirety of the video. That just means that, you know, next um, video, I've just got to disable the comments earlier. So that way the the uh comments don't roll up and block the guest face so without further ado here again is the very first episode of when the hunt calls my guest um on this episode is brandon ramos um a hunter from new york city and instructor from gotham archery out in new york city hope you guys enjoy so ladies and gentlemen without further ado let me welcome you all to the very first episode of when the hunt calls now why is it called when the hunt calls essentially me personally i felt over the last couple of years i've had a, a sort of calling that has culminated into a, a snowball if you will of events over the last couple of months which is me taking up archery um and deciding that i want to hunt now this specific um platform i'm taking on instagram live with when the hunt calls is an opportunity for me to share my journey but um, but to be able to pick the brains of some seasoned people, whether they be archers, hunters, or whatever their profession or skill may be, and for you guys, the, the followers, to be able to learn as I'm learning. So I've got a pen and a pad here, so I will be taking notes <laughs> as well if there's anything that, that's new to me. So for my first guest, um, I wanted to have somebody on that is from New York City just like myself, all right? So without further ado, let me introduce Brandon Ramos. Thank you, sir. What's going on, what's going on? What's going on, man? So I came across you on Instagram one day. Um, I don't know how I started following you. I may have liked one of your pics and, and hit follow. <laughs> and then uh, one of your videos one day was of you just taking a walk on the way to the range. And I was like, yo, <laughs> this dude sounds like me. He's in Brooklyn about <laughs> to go shoot. And Brooklyn is where I was born and raised. I live in Queens now. But tell the folks on Instagram what you do um, that that pertains to archery. Sure. Yeah. Um, first of all, thank you so much for allowing me to come on. Um, I'm honored be, to be like the first guest and especially to do something with New York. I mean, you know, as a, as a new hunter myself, um, I, I only this is my third season starting up now. All right. I went through a lot of the same types of things of kind of trying to feel my way through and the pitfalls that come with being involved in something like this in New York. Yes. So, so this is a, a, a great opportunity and I'm, and I'm very grateful and very thankful for not only for you, but for all of your followers, just give me an opportunity to kind of talk about this. Wow. Thank so, you again for coming on. So, um, yeah, I'm an instructor at, at Gotham Archery, but my, my, um, overall journey in this i guess started similar to yours which is that you know i'm I'm, a, I'm 38 years old right now but um about five years ago i came out of being in martial arts for many years couldn't really train anymore mm -hmm. and was looking for something and i'm kind of surfing through youtube and i see and i'll throw the name out there because everybody's heard of him mm -hmm. i see this video with cameron haynes ah. and he's <laughs> And he's shooting arrows and he's talking about like, you, you need to practice and you should always be practicing. And I'm like, you know, I've never shot a bow. I'd like to shoot a bow. 
right. So I'm I'm online clicking away trying to find a place. I come across Gotham Archery. Um, walk in there, did an intro class, fell in love with it. Not far after that, I ended up kind of going through the questioning process of trying to get some equipment. Got a bow, started shooting. Got a phenomenal instructor that that kind of paired up with me, All right. and helped train me. And she um she was actually a national champion archer. Nice. So I I got real fortunate in that respect and fell in love with just not only the act of shooting a bow, but there was something about the the act of hunting specifically when I started talking to to people who had done it for years that I was like, you know, I never really understood what it was and what real conservation, quote unquote, was. Mm. I just had like these kind of New Yorker-esque ideas of like, oh, I go to the store and buy my meat. <laughs> so so that was that was a real big push and then fell in love with it a couple after uh, about a year of shooting they they asked me to come on board and kind of go through the process of becoming an instructor wow okay and and from there it was it was all she wrote because I dedicated myself to being an archer at that point I was like I want to be great at this I I started taking classes every single time I could and you know I fell in love with it and I, and that's part of the joy for me is spreading that love to others dope dope um, one of the things I forgot to ask, what part of New York are you from? Just to let everybody oh, know. Born and raised in Brooklyn. Ah, yes. BK to the fullest. All That's right. right. So, um, B- all right. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was just going to say, you know, it, and that's another thing is that having a range in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing, man. Dude, it's a beautiful I, thing to be able to walk to it. Living in Queens now, when I came across Gotham, um, Gotham Archery, Archery Online, I was surprised as well. So I was just like, and it's funny, after all those these years of seeing it, you know, ads on, on Instagram and just seeing the posts and stuff like that, I was mm-hmm. like, yo, I got to get out there. I got to get out there. And it wasn't until <laughs> maybe a few months ago that I actually stepped foot in there just to see what it was look like. You know, my wife and I and the kids, we just drove down to Brooklyn and then, um, and, uh, you know, just went in, asked about the rate, stuff like that, and left. Like, no one shot. And then uh, yep. last last week, I got the chance to actually go in. Um, I I took one of your intro courses and stuff like that. And um, and uh, what do you call? It? I had one of your bow techs, Clifton, uh, hook me up and bow tune and dude. tune my bow. Yeah, very cool, very cool dude. Um, and tune my bow for me. Um, so like shooting straight now. Um, <laughs> and then uh, I got to actually shoot on the range over there. So, um, I guess I should ask. Um, you said you've been hunting for like three years now, right? Um, yeah. Where exactly have you hunted? Okay, so um, the majority of my hunting was upstate Adirondacks area. Okay. Um, I I was able actually through Instagram as well. I was able to pair up with a with a local guide um, named. Uh, he goes by the Instagram handle of zero feet per second. Yes, Alex. Yep. Mm-hmm, Alex and awesome guy, and he actually took me out on my first ever hunt. And that was, right. that was a, that was a cool experience. And then from there, it was just the love affair. Like, mm. so, um, also hunted some of Westchester as well. Nice. Um, okay. cause it's a, cause of both strictly boat areas. Yep. So I'm a, I'm a New York guy to the heart so far. All right. Hey, Hey, urban right now, urban archery NYC is a, is a solo thing, but I would love, love whether it, it starts now or later on the, down the line for it to become an actual hunting group. You know what I'm saying? Not just about me. Mm-hmm. So if this is the start of it, then sh- shoot, man. Then you know, we'll, <laughs> offline, we'll definitely link up and talk about how maybe All right. um, maybe th- this coming season would be my first season. I could rock with you. You know what I'm saying? To we'll see what happens. Yo, man, you know I'm in. All right. So um, now... How did you transition? Because you said you said you went initially. You just wanted to be a really skilled ar- uh, archer. Mm-hmm. How did you transition from wanting to be a skilled archer to now wanting to hunt? That is a great question. Um, so, I think there's kind of a natural progression when you're shooting a bow that you just want to kind of work on shooting at other types of targets. Not something that's alive or anything necessarily, but. You know, you put up different types of targets, you put up baseball cards, like anything just kind of different. So we had like these 3D style targets, paper targets that went up. 
And I was kind of like, I don't know how I feel about shooting at that at the moment. But it, it gave me a segue to actually meet someone who at the range was a, was a hunter and had been hunting for like close to like 40 years or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the range is a beautiful place no matter what range it is. If you have an opportunity to be at one and you're, and you're around people who, who take part in these actions, they're such a great resource. And, it's, and having a chance to kind of sit down and talk while we're shooting, you know, we'll take a couple of shots, get off the line. And as we're waiting for other people to finish up, we just started conversing about it. And he's like, hey, you know, have you ever thought about hunting? I was like, no, I've never really considered it. You know, I don't know how I feel about the act of hunting. He was like, you know, you should really look more into it about, you know, what we're actually doing in hunting and, you know, about, you know, just how many deer there were and, you know, what's happening with people running into them on Staten Island and just all these little things that I didn't really kind of consider and so I started looking into it. I started reading more about it. I, I signed up for the DEC newsletter. Ah, I've done and, that. I've done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then so a hunter safety class came along, and I, and I recommend to anybody, if you're on the fence about hunting, is do a hunter safety. Mm -hmm. Like really, really get into that, in that position where you can listen to some of the stories and listen about how serious people take this and that it, there's more to it than just – trying to take an animal, but that there's a level of, of ethics involved in this and there's a level of morality involved in this. And, mm -hmm. you know, that this is a very, it's, it is a very serious thing to take part in and it shouldn't be taken lightly. And, and the people who take the time out of their day to do these hunter safety courses, this means something to them. So uh, I, I definitely recommend if you're on the fence to do that. Yeah, I, I took about a month ago, I took my hunter's uh, safety course and actually, um, July, the weekend of July 27th, I'll be taking the bow hunter safety course. And I think, um, just like you're saying, one of, one of the biggest takeaways for me is I, I came in, I transitioned into just wanting to shoot my bow, just, you know, wanting to do target archery and, and then wanting to become a hunter, um, not realizing the, the huge, um impact that hunting has mm -hmm. on on conservation i didn't realize how much money um from hunters alone goes towards wildlife conservation um mm -hmm. and then i was on the impression you know hunting was simply you know simply was you know shooting uh shooting a firearm or a bow and you know killing an animal but mm -hmm. uh, I've since then learned, you know, that it's more than that. It's it's more than just killing the animal. It is the act of hunting, being out in nature, learning about the environment that you're hunting in and um, mm -hmm. the, the animal that you're hunting and just being out there and enjoying it. Um, being a native New Yorker, what do you feel like? Because I know I have my, my own my own things <laughs> in, in mind. What do you think has been... I guess, for lack of a better term, some of the hardships becoming a hunter. Like, what difficulties did you have um, just getting out there? So I'd say the, the first thing for me was, was really finding other people who were like-minded. Okay. So, you know, I was fortunate enough to be in a range where I, where I found people who, you know, flocked to the ranges for that specific purpose. But... Had I not been in that environment and wanted to hunt, I think it would have been extremely difficult to find someone to go out there with. I actually, my one of my really good hunting buddies, um, uh, Franco, you know, you see him online as uh, Franco Dot Knives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Ralph was, I he was actually recommended to me by another friend of mine who was like, oh, you know, you want to go into this hunting thing and get involved in it. You know, I have a friend of mine who does it. So you know, I ended up with people by accident almost. So it wasn't even like yeah. a full on looking for someone. And I think that if I'd have been trying to seek out people to hunt with, that might've been one of the biggest pitfalls because, you know, everyone has their different opinion of it. And, you know, being a New Yorker and taking part in archery, you're already in a fringe level kind of sport. Agreed. So. All right. Um, I get see for me for me personally the I guess what's been happening is um I'm I'll be 43 next week right um I am a Happy husband birthday. <laughs> thank you so um, <laughs> I am a husband I I am a father of 3 um I work mm -hmm. a job where I'm working you know anywhere from 45 to 50 hours a week 
all right yeah. so i don't i don't know what your marital status is or your your you know oh. family life is married like. man <laughs> oh, you are. all right all right yes sir so, so all right so did your family did your wife um you know and family find it difficult uh to accept this new endeavor this new this new sport you wanted to take on so it's funny it was almost my wife's idea oh wow all right yeah she but i don't i don't necessarily know if she if it was her idea because she actually wanted me to go do it or if she just wanted to get me out the house <laughs> <laughs> but right, you know you. it it was one of those things where she was like, oh, you know what? Like, we were talking, we were, she's really big on, like, eating healthy and eating, eating organically. And, you know, you buy, you, you look at chicken in the store and, you know, it's like a, you know, you buy a turkey and it's like a 45-pound turkey. It's like a medicine ball. Like, you just, there's just something that you see. Exactly. Yeah. When you see yeah. it and you're like, there's just something not healthy about what I'm looking at. And we had always talked about just, you know, I wish there was a cleaner method of getting or procuring food. All right. Now, yeah. to anyone who has hunted now, you, you learn immediately that there's a reason why it's called hunting and not killing. <laughs> it is animals are smarter than you think they are. Yes. But, <laughs> but the actual act of, of going through it in, in, was, was a big part of it, of trying to procure something that is clean, that is fresh, that is, that's untampered by, you know, injected, stuff and whatnot mm -hmm. i when you start really thinking about it, you're like wow none of the stuff that i'm eating should be eating what it ate <laughs> yeah yeah no I, t I totally understand because with this whole healthy even healthy eating movement and you know people really focusing on eating organic you can't get any more organic than something like a deer than something like mm -hmm. a wild turkey you know what i'm saying and the the sport of hunting the awesome part of of hunting is you're pitting these skills that you have learned um, against an animal that has evolved to simply survive. Like all the skills, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, that it has is, is, isn't about, oh, just walking here to get food. It's like, what's that? What's that sound? Is that, is that thing trying to kill me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And then it yeah. falls, you know what I'm saying? So this thing has been, has been evolving over however many years to survive us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's one of the, the things that attracts me to hunting is just being able to learn about whatever animal it is I'm going to hunt and the, the surrounding area I'll be hunting in. Um, now, I guess another question I had is because I, I'm going to put it to you out there because I've seen the pictures on your, on your Instagram page. So I'm going <laughs> to right. ask you because a uh, first, first question. All right. I'll make this uh, uh, like a two parter. Let's all get right? it. <laughs> All right, so why bow hunting as opposed to hunting with a firearm? Okay, so that, that's a lot easier than I think it, it would seem. New York is not the easiest place to get a firearm license. Facts. Or, or <laughs> permit, should I say. It's yeah. not even a license, it's yeah. a permit. Um, they ask for a lot of stuff. I live not that far from a school, you know, so I know, I know sometimes if you live close to a school district, that can be an issue too, I've heard. I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on that, but I've heard right. a lot of different things from different people. And so, and plus owning a firearm is, is a whole other level of responsibility. I've went to ranges and shot firearms before, mm -hmm. but, you know, owning a firearm is, is, is a huge responsibility. And I didn't know necessarily if I was ready to take that level of responsibility on. Got it, got um, it. Also, with a bow, I feel like there's, there's something about having to get closer to, to whatever it is that you're hunting. And I feel like if you're, if you're willing to go out there and take an animal's life, and I'm not taking anything away from anyone who rifle hunts, I would absolutely do it, mm. you know. But, mm. but for me, in my initial for, uh, foray into doing this, I felt like having to get up close and personal within, like, a range of, like, 40 to 50 yards at max for me mm -hmm. was – you know, I can actually see the animal clearly. I can, I can see its body moving as it breeds. Like, if I take that shot, I absolutely am going to see the repercussions of that shot. I'm going to have to live with the repercussions of that. And that's going to decide whether or not I maintain this lifestyle of being a hunter. Or if I decide, you know what, I don't want to take part at all in this process and I end up a vegan. Not going to happen. I'm Puerto Rican. We're not going to go vegan. But... <laughs> <laughs> 
I hear you. I totally hear you. So the second part to this question is, all right, so now, one, I got to say that's a dope um, point of view, the first part to that. I didn't even think about that, whether, the, you know, the fact that you know yourself as to you weren't sure if you were ready or not to take on the responsibility of handling a mm -hmm. firearm, owning a firearm, and then also, like like you, I'm I'm in love with the idea of having to get skilled enough to get that close to an animal using mm -hmm. a bow. So the second part to this question is now compound, recurve, or <laughs> or longbow. Oh man. So I I shoot all three. <laughs> nice, but, nice. So I but each one each one requires something different. So my my first time ever going in the woods, I had delusions of grandeur, my man. I, I went out there with my longbow in hand. I had, you know, you know, I, I'm also kind of, a, I geek out when it comes to archery as well. So like, you know, I had my arrows custom made and they helped me out in Gotham. I had them specially right. made and the heavy FOC front of center. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was shooting every day leading up to hunting season. So I was in there for at least an hour, let's say five days a week, shooting from different, like they, they allowed me to, to kind of test out different ways that I wanted to go about shooting until I was like drilling Phenomenal shots. I was ready. I was pumped. I was hyped up. And then we get out there. And you realize a 64-inch bow in hand is quite the thing to maneuver when you're walking through the woods. Yeah. I'm, to give you some perspective, I'm 5'7". Oh, wow. Okay. So, <laughs> so wow. you know, walking around with a, with a long bow in hand was – it was – it wasn't bad experience, but it, it did mean that I – had to be more cognizant of what I'm walking around, what I'm walking into, when I'm moving through any type of debris. Mm, all right. Um, and so I had always, I had been shooting compound prior to shooting a longbow for a long time. And so I always had a compound that's kind of like, okay, if things get a little hairy and I feel like I need to stretch it out, I can always go to my compound. I, I knew my effective range with a longbow was about 30 yards, but with my compound, 50 yards was, was money in the bank for me. All right. So um, recurve, phenomenal, different type of animal, a little bit faster. Okay. Um, but again, you, when you're walking around with a, with a recurve, you know, you're looking at, at the smallest, maybe 58 inches. So, you know, it's still, it's still a pretty big size bow to maneuver with. And I didn't know if I was going to be hunting out of a tree stand. Mm -hmm. So maneuvering from a tree stand with, with that kind of bow, I felt like was going to be a little bit of a, a task, not a hassle, mm -hmm. but just a task that I was going to have to learn how to manipulate. Mm -hmm. And then compound, I mean, compound's a beautiful thing. The, the only drawback with compound is that, you know, f fixing it on the fly, something goes wrong with a compound uh, and you don't have a, you don't have a press in your truck. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yep. All right. I like that. I like that. So, um, you so your first hunt, you said you went out there with the longbow, right? So now, did yeah, you, I went out there with the longbow. Did you hunt a uh, tree stand, or or were you spotting and stalking? Like, what were you doing? So the the it was a multi day hunt that I went out okay. with um with Alex. Right. So the first day was kind of you know, more, I wouldn't say blind, but it was kind of more ambush. We knew some, that there were some trails. Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of posted up off of the trails and just kind of saw what was going on. The first area was a little dry because a lot of people had come out. Mm -hmm. So then the next location we went to was basically a spot and stalk. All right. Um, and so, and this is, I'll, I'll give you a great example as to knowing what you can and can't do at certain times. We walk into this area and we're kind of like real slow. Like I'm thinking all my hunter safety stuff. Okay, move real slow. Take a step. Stop. Listen. Take a step. Stop. Listen. Mm -hmm. And so, and he's like, you know, things happen fast here. There, there's, there are a lot of deer in this area. We get past this little, um, I said it was about maybe some pretty high grass, like about five feet high. Mm -hmm. And so I'm kind of dug down and I'm pushing the grass aside of my longbow. And then I see there's like a kind of a little like gully to the, my right. And I see a deer standing there. I can't now for the life of me. I don't know if it was a buck. I don't know if it was a doe. 
but it was big and it was in front of me. And before I could even react to draw my bow, it took a look over his shoulder, spotted me, and then it was at 60 yards. <laughs> wow. Okay. All right. I've, it, I've only watched bolted. YouTube videos. But it, it, so it's that quick. Yeah, it bolted. It was, and then it stopped at around 60. Kind of gave me the look over the shoulder like, no, nah, nah, you're not there yet, son. And then <laughs> took back off into the high grass. And that was, my, that was my first lesson that it is way smarter than I am. Yeah, dude was like, you don't want none of this. You don't want none of yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. No, man. And with a stick bow, you know, you have to know what your effective range is. You have to practice. And, and mm -hmm. I knew at that range, there's, there's no way that I personally can take a shot like that. Uh -huh. I, had, I had a compound and I was dialed in. You know, that's still an option at that distance. Although it had already spotted me and I wouldn't take a shot with it looking dead at me. Mm -hmm. But... You know, with a compound, if, had, if it had not seen me, that was an option still. So that was kind of the, the reality check that, you know, what well, maybe I'm not ready yet to go out there all the time with a stick bow. Maybe I, uh, I need to stretch it out to start with. All right. So tell me, tell me. So did you, did you harvest anything that first, that first season? No, I'm, I have been dry first and second season. But uh, one right. thing that, yeah, but one thing that I have seen is that my patience increased significantly from the first season to the second season. Mm -hmm. And so, whereas I only saw one ant in my first season, I think we saw about four or five this year, or the nice. uh, season that just passed. And, wow. we were, and one of them was um, with my compound in hand within 40 yards, but there was no backstop. And so had I took a shot and, and got a pass through that arrow would have kept going, and I wouldn't have known where it was going to go. And there comes a point where, yeah, the shot would have been, would have been a good shot. It would have been clean. But I, you know, ethically, you know, you can't take that shot because you just don't know where it's going to go afterward. And so, I you. I you know, I just you. kind of stared at the deer and was like, all right, you won this one too. I got you. <laughs> Coming back for you, though. Cool, cool. Can I ask um, what oh, – you said you were up in the Adirondacks, right? Yes. All right, cool, cool. Now, um, now what, I, what I was mentioning before about being, you know, a family man myself – what I'm finding difficult, because one of the, one of the biggest things that that Alex, you know, for for those of you who don't know, you can mm -hmm. find him on Instagram at zero feet per second. That Alex stresses is that you've got to get out into the field before you go out yeah. to hunt. Now, that is logistically, it is highly difficult for me because, like I said, because of my yeah. work schedule, because of my wife and kids, because of my family commitments, in 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 general, um, you know, I have little ones and and I don't want. This because this is also new to my family, so I don't want yeah. this, uh, my you know, taking on this endeavor to leave a bad taste in their mouth to leave for them to think of hunting. I'd be like, Oh, that's mm -hmm. something daddy's gonna go do to leave us, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, I am trying to navigate the waters, um, you know, respectfully to my family, mm -hmm. so I find it difficult to get out to, to the woods to get familiar, you know, with the place that I'm going to hunt. What did you do? Um, because again, you live in Brooklyn, and for those mm -hmm. that don't know, um, even living in, even in the suburbs of New York City, it's still a decent drive to get out, yeah. you know, to to a place to be able to scout and things like that. You know what I'm saying? So, what did you do for that to prepare, like going out to the woods and practicing shooting out there? Because that's another thing Alex recommends is shooting mm -hmm. in the woods. What did you do to prepare for something like that? So. Fort I was fortunate enough to have access to, you know, like um, Floyd Bennett Field is, uh, is, yeah, a, out, is a great outdoor range. So you can actually get an idea as to how your flight of your arrows are in weather. There's also um, a range in Staten Island that's outdoors as well. Okay. Um, I, I can get the name that. to you. I'll, I'll get the name to you after we, after we get offline because right, um, it slips my mind at the moment. All but right. um, it's a really good range, and it's a bring-your-own-target type of range, but the distance goes out to around 70-plus yards. That's the and Staten so Island the one or, or Floyd Bennett yeah. Field? The Staten Island Floyd one? Bennett as well, both of them. All right, all right. so you, it's, it's both are kind of like bring your own targets and you can go deep. Well, Floyd Bennett has their own big targets there, but the Staten okay. Island one ha is a bring your own target type of setup. Okay. And that was hugely important to just kind of learning what the flight of my arrow was going to be in adverse conditions. Mm. Because... Because, it, you know, just because you're tuned indoors does not represent how your arrow is going to fly when you're outside. Agreed. You know, a slight gust of wind, 
will will set everything on a whole other course. Um, we made sure that we shot in all kinds of weather. So if it was oh, raining okay. outside, we went out there and we shot in the rain. Um, that I learned a lot about with my stick bow. I learned a lot about the fletchings getting wet and how that would influence the flight of my arrows. Mm, so that was okay. that was gigantic. That's actually what helped me to change and, and start using a compound bow again because right. the adverse condition would have so affected my arrows that I just it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have been fun. Oh, all right. Understood. Understood. Um, Google Maps. When I tell you, man, I I became like the Iron Chef of Google Maps. I was I was on there all the time, man. I was I was living in the woods through Google Maps at that one point because uh, I right. just because you know I same thing as you. I you know I can't get into some of these places all the mm. time, and so you know, kind of getting a, a, a topographical view of it. I think we downloaded um, one of the apps um, on X we had as well. All right. Yeah, and so it, we were trying yeah, to get as some, many. Some of my followers have been having uh, some pretty good debates but about, you know, Onyx mm -hmm. and, and HuntWise and whatnot. But we'll, we, we can go <laughs> discuss that later. <laughs> but um, So I, ju I just learned about the other one from you as well. So, uh, you know, I, I had only exposed with Onyx. And, you know, it was a great to kind of get, a, get these views and these pictures of where the areas are and what they look like. So at least I had a point of reference, even if I couldn't get out there. I had an idea of what I might be walking into. All right. That's good to know. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Um, now, being from Brooklyn and shooting at a range in Brooklyn, um, or just being a New Yorker in general mm -hmm. that hunts, have you felt any kind of pushback from any, like, anti-hunters, anything like that? Because our city, for the most part, is very liberal. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, and then with strict gun laws and stuff like that. Um, but it, it's, it's just, I guess I've yet to encounter anyone to to get at me about anything, you know, me wanting to hunt. But then it could be about mm -hmm. the simple fact that it's because I haven't hunted yet. I've yet to harvest any animal and people are probably yeah. just, you know, watching and waiting. <laughs> but have you experienced <laughs> any, any, any kind of like, uh, like I said, pushback or anything like that from anyone who's who's totally against it. Um, I've been very fortunate in the fact that I I have not gotten any pushback for for that, whether it be from family or or otherwise. I'm I'm very fortunate that my my wife is as understanding and my family for the most part is very very open minded about any endeavor I get into because I'm super like tunnel vision when I get into something, and so yeah. they know that I'm going to look at everything before I do it. Yeah. Um, I also do my best to really, unless it's pursued, if someone comes after me in regard to it, I do my best to just kind of serve, like to sidestep anything to that effect. People are touchy nowadays, man. And it, it doesn't it doesn't help any of us, whether it be through hunting or what have you, to to go on the offensive and really kind of attack. If someone comes at us, then we then we fire back with the best thing possible. We fire back with kindness. And with knowledge. Kindness. Yeah, kill them with kindness and you know? knowledge, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm not the most knowledgeable person, and I understand that there's a lot I don't know. And so mm -hmm. I go to people who know more. So I'm not going to sit down and, and go at somebody who's looking to have a, a fight in that level and not be prepared fully to defend myself. So it's best to just leave it as it lay. Everybody has an opinion. Your opinion is not going to jive with mine. That's cool. You go your way. I'm going to go shoot my bow. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Um, I guess. Uh, are you going to um, continue hunting within the New York area until you harvest, you know, a deer um, or are you open to going outside of New York to hunt? And oh, have you turkey hunted yet? Oh, you know what? You know, I what? haven't. Oh. Let, 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 I, I, you know, the one question came right after the other. I'm sorry. No, it's so, cool, man. All right. So are you going to stay hunting around the New York area until you've harvested, you know, a deer or an animal? Or are you open to hunting outside of New York? I'm absolutely open to hunting outside of New York. Um, you know, we I think we're a little limited in how many opportunities we have. Like there's a lot. There are a good amount of hunters like in, in where we were in uh, Westchester. When we came out of the woods, there about maybe like three other guys popped out a little bit after us with tree stands. So, 
you know, like even in a small, relatively small area, there was there was a lot of people there. And, I, and we had passed maybe one or two areas that we'd went into that looked like they had already been pretty much dried out. Mm-hmm. You know, and you can see like where people had went in prior to us, trucks that were there early. And didn't, like we got in there early and there were trucks before us. So, oh, OK. So, you know, you know, I'm, I'm open to, to wherever this journey takes me. And if it takes me out of the state, then I'm I'm 100% on board. I even put in for a tag um, for elk in Pennsylvania last year. I didn't really? draw it, but right. they had a, an opening for elk in Pennsylvania, and I was like, oh, I'm I'm in. So I I, right. I put in my for over there as well. Elk elk is primarily spot and stalk, right? Or I believe it, so. All right, and um, so now what what does a tag like that cost though? Is that something pricey or? I think it was five. It was, yeah, it was like five dollars to put in for the drawing, but I think it was it was like a five hundred dollar tag or something like that. Damn! Right. But I but it's one of those once in a lifetime type of things, you know. Like you right, you copy, get yeah. that yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. you kind of get that hunt. You're like you know what I'm cashing it whether I get something or not. The one thing yeah. I'm taking out of that experience is the experience. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right, so now when you've hunted, especially when you, you hunted with Alex, sorry, backtrack a mm-hmm. little bit, um, how long were you out in the field for? So we would get up around 4.30-ish, because mm-hmm. we, we actually camped out on the land prior, which okay. was another great experience. So right. we, we camped out on the land. We're out of the tents around like 4-something-ish, so we mm-hmm. red-lamped it ready to, to um, some setup locations that he had because nobody knows the land like that dude does. He, right. he was navigating with pretty much no lamp on. So, yeah, he's, he's a billy goat. So, <laughs> so he, he got us to, um, to uh, it was kind of like a, a man-made uh, blind that he had, basically. Okay. So he had put up, like, stakes and, and put, like, a, a camo netting around it, like, really, really cool. Mm-hmm. And so we were in that location, I think, the last two days of our hunt. All right. All right. So you, you were there for two days, three days? Three days. Three days. All right. So starting what? Let's say you went in on a Friday, Saturday? Yeah. We went in Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So so you started out Friday morning or Friday night? Friday, mo- uh, Friday night we got there. All Actually, right. no. We got there Friday morning. We started hunting Friday afternoon. Okay, and then camped so out. So we gave ourselves almost zero time. Yeah, camped yeah, out, right. and and basically tried to spend as much time out there as possible. Um, one thing that I I learned, and anybody I guess if you guys are listening will attest to, is that the, you're only gonna have more opportunities if you're out there more. Yeah, agreed. Like, one and dones are, are pretty rare unless you absolutely know for sure that there's animals in that area, mm-hmm. and then it's still subject to what the weather is and every other variable under the sun. So, you know, his whole thing was get us as many opportunities as much time out there as possible and that was that was hugely important just in getting accustomed to being out there you know i'm a new yorker i got zero bushcraft skills i'm sitting out there in camo and, and sitting on a on a little ass uncomfortable chair <laughs> so, so for me for me was, my, my most re- my most recent hunt was for like the the latest pair of kicks you know what i'm saying so let, let you say it great, so <laughs> So, um, hey man, I I got them Air Max ninety eight. So no, you, know, you, know what you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I'm a, a big fan of Jays myself. So, um, so I guess, um, are you familiar with? Because I had a question from, all right. So Wendell, um, who is on Instagram at no fear three seventeen or at no mm-hmm. underscore fear underscore three seventeen was gonna was asking what makes hunting in New York different from any any hunting i guess anywhere in the midwest but because you haven't hunted out of state you know what I'm saying we'll yeah. probably save that question for you know a later time because i definitely would love to have you back yeah on. but um, oh yeah i can't re- i couldn't remember who asked but um you know one of my followers was talking about and i will i will shout him out if anything in the comments later was asking mm-hmm. about our, our deer seasons our hunting seasons out here um are you familiar okay. are you familiar with exactly when the dates are or anything like that so after we had after I read the comment on that actually earlier today, I went online and just checked out what the dates are. So I actually have it right here in front of me. I got you back. 
<laughs> yeah, I feel like you're like your correspondent over on on the news channel right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> about to give you the weather. So um we got bow hunting season. <laughs> exactly. Bow hunting season starting. All right. So let's see what we got here. Actually they're giving me the the black bear. That's not what I want. Yeah, I, I, got, like got, early. I got caught up like that too. I was I was looking at all the I was like, all oh, this for for the deer, but then I realized the mm -hmm. deer hunting dates were, were further up on the page. So I'm pulling it up right now. So while you're looking, so, I'll, I'll let everybody know. For, gotcha. For those of you who don't know with New York State, New York State is divided into two zones. There's a northern zone and a southern zone. So the northern mm -hmm. zone is, is, I believe, if I understand my geography, is a lot of the, the Adirondacks, you know, further up. And, yes. then, and then everything else afterwards all the way down is like the middle of New York all the way down to Westchester towards New York City and then out to Long Island. So, so early bow season is September 27th through October 19th. Okay. And then regular season... Um, is from De October 20th to December 2nd. Okay. And then we have late bow season, which is December 3rd through December 9th. And that's all okay. northern zone. All right. And again, anybody who's looking for the, for the dates, um, if you go on through the DEC website, that's the best bet in terms of getting all the information that you need because that, they're the ones who are going to update it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm not, I, I wouldn't assume that anything changes to that extent, but it's always good to just go back on and double check with the DEC and just make sure that, you know, you have all the information that you need. Yep. And um, I should add, I should add something. I don't know if you know, um, because I mean, you're you're a little bit more experienced than I am, a lot more experienced than I am, having been out the field out in the field already twice. Um, Long Island, uh, or specifically mm -hmm. Suffolk County, is bow only. Yeah. I just learned. I yeah. Didn't, I didn't know that. So. That's definitely something I would want to uh, look into. I don't know what the public land situation is out there, um, but in when you were out in Westchester with Alex, um, did you hunt private land or public? So um, out of Rundex with Alex was was private land. Okay. And the Westchester was public land. Uh, all right. So did and, you and did you hunt those did you hunt those areas um both within one season or two separate seasons? Two separate seasons. Okay. All right. And that was that was an experience because you know it's it's public land, people still hike some of these areas. So okay. you know, you have to be so conscious be of yeah. Mm -hmm, of what's around you at all times. And just to give you an idea, on public land we actually had coyotes come running up like around us at one point. So my friend who I was with, um, Ralph actually had two coyotes run past them at about five yards. And I had one behind me when I, right after I had eyed something up in front, it came around from behind me and I think blew out the deer that I was, that I was watching. Oh, damn. Okay. So, yeah, man. So even on that public land, it's live. <laughs> wow. But I had, I had heard um, a buddy of mine at work who hunts, he, he's, he's part of a lodge that owns a lease upstate. So I can't get in on that. Um, he, uh, <laughs> he told me that Westchester um, is barely, barely hunted. Um, in your experience, the last two seasons, is that true? Like, is it that you, like, you, while you did encounter other hunters, um, were they few and far between, or did you see a lot of, 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 uh, you know, other hunters? I think we went out around seven or eight times last season. And I'd say almost every time that we went out there, there were, there were some trucks out there prior to us getting to our locations. Mm -hmm. Um, some areas that are further up, you know, everything's far here. So, you know, the farther up you drive, you kind of hit this like weird area where people just generally don't want to go. So if it's like a three hour ride, you're kind of in that like soft zone possibly. Yeah. So some days we'd have, we'd be real fortunate and we wouldn't see a, a single truck out there. And then we thought we were by ourselves All head right. back to the truck. And there's like two guys coming out with like, with stands and we're like, yo, they were there the whole time. Okay. Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now, now in the Adir Adirondacks area that you guys hunted, was that during like the early bow season or during the regular season? Cause I know during that the was regular bow early bowl because during the regular season um basically you'd have to be you have to be wearing the the orange right because i believe they can they can use firearms at that time yeah correct 
Yeah. So yeah, we did we did early bowl season um at the Adirondacks, and that was that was cool. Like just being out there that early on and not really having a lot of people because private land. I mean, there's something to be said about it, man. When you when you just the animals don't have that pressure of people being there all the time. Agree. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right, man. So what I'm gonna do? We're gonna wrap this up. But what I want to do is ask you one final question. All right. Yeah. What piece of advice you're 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 two seasons down coming into your third season this year, right? Um, mm -hmm. What advice would you give someone like myself who wants to hunt? You know what I'm saying? What okay. is there is there one single piece of advice that I should know or that anyone should know or one one thing or one aspect of hunting or getting to become a hunter that, you know, a, aspiring hunters should avoid? Like either or. Um, what I would say is, and it's going to seem like the most basic thing, but, you know, practice, practice, practice there. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to go out there with any, with any tool, weapon, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. is knowing your equipment back to front, understanding what its capabilities are, understanding what your capabilities are with it in your hand. Mm -hmm. Because... You know, and, and this goes into something that we, we spoke about briefly before, um, before I came on, which is, you know, even when you're selecting your bow and you're selecting equipment, is don't go by what the big names are saying you should go by. Mm. You know, there, a lot of them are sponsored, man. They're going to say what they have to say to pay the bills. Agreed. Try out. Agreed. Try out different equipment. Some people say, oh, you don't, you know, don't go. For, and I won't name any brands, but don't go for this specific bow because it's not a high-end bow. Or don't mm. go for this shoot take your time learn the equipment find what fits you the best because you will do better with what fits you better Copy you know that. so i i say and don't and to anyone buying a bow do not buy a bow with your ego you know if you've if you've never shot a bow before and you know that you've been crossfitting all week don't go ahead and go out there and buy a 70 pound compound bow that you've never shot before in your life mm -hmm. you know Go learn proper form. Start with a weight that's comfortable. Build up. You will build those muscles quicker than you think you will, and you'll be shooting. You'll be nail driving before you even realize it. But nice. a lot of people make the mistake of buying bows with their ego. You know, they're you know you've never shot before, but you're buying a super high end bow at a really high poundage. You know, you don't know what you're doing. There's a real big chance that you blow that bow up, or if you didn't get arrows fitted correctly and all kinds of insanity can happen. So I don't want to drag it longer because I'll go on this subject, man. I will go in. But, you know, no, that, but for, that's one of those for, things. But for the most part, like, when, when you are, when you've purchased, a, like, a 70-pound bow, per se, right, mm -hmm. it, it's that it's adjustable up to that, that draw weight, right? It's not that it's only set at 70 pounds. Or is it that? So it depends on, it depends on the bow. So, like, um, some bows have uh, incremental weight that they, get, that they are set at. So it might be from 60 to 70. Mm. There are other bow types that have a wider range where they can go from, you know, maybe like 15 to roughly like 65, 70. Mm. And so they have more growth in those bows. But, you know, sometimes people, they look at that and they go, oh, you know what, that's a lower end or a lower price. Doesn't mean it's a lower end, but they see a lower price tag mm. and they just don't go for it. And, that's, and I think you do yourself a disservice like that because if you haven't shot consistently, you know, things change. Your form changes as you shoot. How I started shooting to how I shoot now, my form is completely different. Mm. You know, and, it, and so it. understanding understanding that is, is big and it only comes from constantly practicing and shooting. And if you're lucky enough and you have a range that you can go to that can allow you to demo different equipment, then you have an opportunity to kind of learn what fits you and what you're looking for so that you're not just purchasing based on what a forum said was the best option or what you saw in a, in a YouTube review. There's no substitute for putting a bow in your hand, letting them fly. Nice. Those are the best words to end on, man. Yo, Brandon, thank you very much for coming on and agreeing to be, you know, my, my very first guest of When the Hunt Calls. Um, you know what? Tell people where they can find you on social media. Sure, man. Um, I'm at Brandon underscore, oh, sorry, Bramos underscore Archery. Um, I'd say that's the number one spot to find me. You can hit me up over there. Give me a follow. I always follow back my peoples. Um, 
Now, like almost everybody that follows me is basically archery related, and I and I like it that way. I like reaching out with the community. I'll be asking some questions too of you coming up real soon because I got some questions that with what you're doing here, and and I love how you're presenting this. I think Thank it's you. super important for for people who are just coming into this lifestyle to have people that they can relate to. And I wish that there was something like this already going on when I was first getting my feet dipped into it. So what you're doing, man, is super that, man. important. You know, especially here in New York, reaching out to a community that absolutely needs representation in this. So I'm super grateful for being allowed to come on here and share my love with it with all of your followers as well, man. So, yeah, I'm um, well, Ramos underscore archery, and I'm at Gotham Archery. You can check us out online, got-archery.com. And we do intro classes where, you know, it's a good spot to go to. It's a good place to learn, and, it's a, and really good people who actually love the sport and they care about it. So... It's a good place yes. to learn if you're not interested in that. I agree. I totally agree because I, I felt a great energy when I was there. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, uh, you have Brandon Ramos, Bramos underscore archery. There you go. Of Gotham <laughs> Archery. You can check them out there. Brandon, I look forward to, for those of you who don't know, Brandon and I haven't even met. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, I look forward <laughs> to linking up with you, linking up with you at Absolutely. the range. You know what I'm saying? Um, and maybe I can get some tips from you, and if not you, from any anyone else at, uh, you know, Gotham. And, again, I really appreciate you and appreciate you coming on tonight. All right? Yo. Thank you so much, man. No doubt. All right? Have get a blessed em. night, brother. Have a blessed night. You too, man. Later. Peace. All right, ladies and gents, thank you for joining me for the very first episode of When the Hunt Calls. Um that was just Brandon Ramos, um, you know, of Gotham Archery in Brooklyn, New York City. You know what I'm saying? Um, hope you guys had a great time listening to him, listening to us chop it up a little bit. Um, and if everything works out, uh, you guys should be able to see this on YouTube within the next 24 to 48 hours, all right? You guys have a blessed, blessed night. Peace.